Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. Today we're going to discuss chip pulse amplification. This technique was originally developed in the mid 1980s by Gerard Moreau and Donna Strickland in order to generate high power optical pulses. In 2018, they actually won the Nobel Prize in Physics for this technique, so I thought it'd be interesting to understand theoretically why it works and also understand why it's Nobel Prize worthy, so to speak. So first of all, if you want to generate high power optical pulses, you might think that the only thing you need is an amplifier. You just send the optical pulse in and a higher power version of the same pulse goes out. And if that isn't enough power, then you can simply daisy chain multiple amplifiers and also get the desired output power. However, there is a fundamental limitation to what kind of peak power you can achieve with this process. Because any gain medium inside an amplifier will have a damage threshold, here indicated with a horizontal red line. And if the power of the pulse exceeds this threshold, the medium itself will actually get damaged, it will get burned. The point is the amplifier gets destroyed if you exceed this level, which means that you can't use the amplifier to boost the power further. And also you have to pay for a new amplifier, which is typically pretty expensive. So it would seem that the highest peak power we can achieve is limited by this damage threshold. But Moreau and Strickland found a way to circumvent this limitation, so I thought we'd explore that in a bit more detail. So for that purpose I created a quick simulation here using my uh, pre-written software that I made myself. In order to uh, test this out, I first generated a time base with a certain number of points and a certain time resolution. Then I created a Gaussian pulse here and initialized it. And then I created a fiber span that consists of three different fibers. The first one has a positive dispersion value, as you can see right here. This means that we have what's called normal dispersion, where red light moves faster than blue light, so that'll cause the pulse to generally spread out in the time domain and obtain a negative chirp in the front and a positive chirp in the back. Then we have a fiber with the same length as before, one kilometer, and this time it has no dispersion, but it does have a negative attenuation coefficient. So if you have negative attenuation, that means we have positive gain. So when propagating through this fiber here, the pulse will experience a gain in power, so it'll actually grow in, in strength. In fact, the animation you just saw is actually this input signal right here, simply propagated through this second fiber exclusively in order to see that the, the power does get, get increased by it. Finally, the third segment here is a fiber that's identical to the first one, except for the fact that it has negative dispersion. So in this case, it'll tend to generate a positive shape in the front and a negative shape in the back, because in this fiber, red light will move more slowly than blue light. So I've simply concatenated these three fibers together and then propagated this pulse through the fiber span using the split step free method, as we've discussed a couple of times in some of the previous videos. So having done that, we can take a look at the animation that pops out on the other end here. So in this case, you can see that initially, the Gaussian pulse begins to spread out in the time domain with a red chip in the front and a blue chip in the back. Then as we enter the gain medium, the gain fiber, you can see the general power, the energy of the pulse gets boosted up, but the gain medium actually ends before we hit the damage threshold. Then when we enter the third fiber, the presence of a normal dispersion will cause the pulse to recompact into a final pulse with a peak power that's much higher than the damage threshold. Let's just see that one more time. So first we spread out the initial pulse, then boost up its power using the gain medium, but we still stay below the damage threshold. Then once we exit the gain medium, we exploit a normal dispersion in order to recompress the pulse into a big spike. Like so, you can see it's much higher than what we achieved right here. Now the exact values I'm using for this simulation right here are a little bit arbitrary. Um, first of all, we wouldn't actually use a fiber length of one kilometer for this sort of thing in practice if you can do it in an optical experiment. In fact, we probably wouldn't even use fibers for it. More likely, instead of a um, normal dispersion fiber at the beginning and a normal uh, dispersion fiber at the end, you'd use some arrangement of uh, mirrors and gratings in free space in order to achieve the same kind of chirping effect. Uh, furthermore, the values I'm using are also a little bit arbitrary. I think for real-life applications, you wouldn't even use something that's on the scale of picoseconds. You'd use something more on the scale of maybe hundreds of femtoseconds or something like that, and even peak powers that are higher than this. You can actually go up to, I think it's petawatts, so it's like 10 to the 12 watts using this kind of technique here. So anyway, you can probably see by this um, discovery that you can actually get a higher peak power than would otherwise be allowed by amplifiers. It's so interesting if you're uh, doing physics or even some kind of manufacturing. Just sticking with the physics first of all, if uh, you want to investigate nonlinear effects, then of course you know that the more optical power we have, the more strongly you can activate some of these nonlinear effects. So if you want to do, let's say, super continuum generation or even a second or third harmonic generation, having a technique for boosting the power of the pulse beyond what's normally possible is super, super valuable. Also, if you're going to do, um, let's say, some kind of micro machining, then um, having a very intense laser pulse is also very beneficial. For example, if you want to cut metal, one thing you could do in the old days, so to speak, is to just have a pulses with um, some amount of energy, but very large durations. In that case, if it's um, hitting a sheet of metal, for example, then it'll simply melt the metal locally. 
and create a little uh, sort of melt pool of, uh, of liquid metal. And you know, it will cut the metal, but it'll also be kind of messy to have this liquid metal sort of floating around. But if you have a sufficiently high power optical pulse, the um, once it hits the metal, it won't simply melt it. It'll actually completely evaporate the metal particles, leaving it very clean cut with uh, very few flaws. Um, so of course that's very valuable if you're doing like microelectronics or even some kind of optical fabrication. That's um, a pretty common technique from what I understand. Another place where you might have heard about the, um, the use of uh, very intense optical pulses is in laser eye surgery. So in the old days, if you wanted to have your uh, surgery done on your eye, you'd require a, well, essentially a surgeon with a sharp knife to cut away the exact bits of your eye that was supposed to be removed. But of course, that relies on the steady hand of the, the surgeon, which is you know, a little bit, uh, little bit precarious. But if you can instead simply evaporate the exact part of the tissue that you want to do surgery on using a very intense optical pulse, that'd be a lot more hygienic and a lot more reproducible and probably a lot safer than relying on a sharp knife and a, and a steady hand. So you can probably see why um, this technique of chirp pulse application was worth the Nobel Prize because it's enabled so many different fields of research and industry and even, even medicine. So I think we can agree that it's uh, somewhat uh, worthwhile to award a Nobel Prize for that. So anyway, I hope you found this little video interesting. Feel free to check out the source code in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.